Welcome, Blackhawks fans, to another edition of Blackhawks Central podcast presented by Breaks Media. I'm your host, Joe Vitale. We're here in episode two, and we have a trade to announce. Taylor Hall is a Chicago Blackhawk. Wow, I can't believe it. That is that is so wild. Um, so the full deal is Taylor Hall and the rights to Nick Foligno for the rights to Ian Mitchell and Alec Regula. Now, I had Alec Regula in my starting lineup last episode. So we're going to obviously change that up. That uh, not going to work. So, uh, you know, and uh, Ian Mitchell, he's joining his former coach at Denver University, Jim Montgomery, who just won, by the way, the Jack Adams Award, Award for Best Coach in the NHL. So congratulations to Jim Montgomery, Monty, as his players like to call him. I had a buddy play for him in the USHL, so he says he loved him. Just amazing coach. Had a little bit of a misstep in Dallas, but he put in the work. He's back. Now he just won the Jack Adams. Awesome story. You'd love to see it. But uh, we don't care about the Boston Bruins. We care about the Chicago Blackhawks. So Taylor Hall, Chicago Blackhawk, uh, he had... Uh, 36 points in 61 games played last season. This is a little bit of a band aid, kind of hurt. I mean, they did a li- Boston did a little bit of cap circumvention, but uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We've been there before too, Patrick Kane, after he uh, broke his collarbone. So, we're gonna sweep that under the rug and we're gonna move on. <laughs> he also played seven games in the playoffs and had eight points, so he was pretty clutch, uh, which is. You really like to see that, him showing up in the big moments so he can shepherd Connor Bedard to do the same. Now, as I mentioned, I had Alec Regula in the starting lineup, and uh, now we just gained two more players as well. So we're going to put those lines in a blender, and we're gonna, I'm going to read them to you now again. So I'm going to go Hall, Bedard, Andreas Athanasiu, Lucas Reichel, Cole Gutman, Taylor Radish, Jason Dickinson, Tyler Johnson, Phil Kurashev. I like to refer to him as Philadelphia. That is not his name at all. It's a, a trailer park re- trailer park boys reference, actually, for Philadelphia Collins. <laughs> and uh, rest in peace, Mustard Tiger. And then fourth line, we got Boris Kachu, Nick Foligno, Colin Blackwell. And extras are going to be Joey Anderson, Mackenzie Enwistle, and Reese Johnson. Now, we were saying that the bottom six was really rough. And it still is. But it's way less rough. And so that Dickinson, Tyler Johnson, Kurashev third line is going to be really good. Plain and simple, it's just going to be good. Uh, Kachu, Felino, Blackwell, Felino, and Blackwell, good defensive players. Boris Kachu kind of lost out there, but he picked up his touch last season towards the end. Uh, playing with Anderson and um, Jujar Kara, he's UFA. I don't think he's coming back, unfortunately. So we'll see how uh, Boris fares with these new line mates. Um, hopefully it's well. And then we're going to go to the D again. Uh, Because Alec Regula, he's gone. And uh, Ian Mitchell couldn't crack the lineup. Good puck-moving defenseman. A little small, but nimble. Played really well at the Spangler Cup a couple years ago uh, for Team Canada. And, um, you know, I just... he, He wasn't really given a shot. He was crowded out. And so I hope that this move um, and the synergy with the head coach in Boston might prove uh, good for him and good for his game. Uh, so we got Korchinski, Seth Jones, Isaac Phillips, Connor Murphy, Jared Tenorti, uh, Nikita Zaitsev. And then Korchinski, once again, is going to stay for nine games. And then we're going to send him back to the Western Hockey League, the CHL, the Canadian Hockey Leagues, which are OHL, Ontario, Western, or WHL, Western, and QMJHL, Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, they all have this agreement with the NHL where they can't go to the AHL. And I think it's a very strange agreement because, uh, well, I mean, obviously the CHL wants their players so that they can sell tickets, so that they can sell and make money 
sell their jerseys and whatnot. But, I mean, um, we're talking about the NHL here, guys. This is the best league in the world for ice hockey. So I think you'd want your players there sooner rather than later to point and say, hey, look what we did. We, we took this guy, and now he's in the NHL. He's in the best league imaginable. So, you know, I don't know what's up with that. I hope maybe in the next CBA collective, bar- collective bargaining agreement that the NHL can hammer that out and then they can bring those players into the AHL. So Korchinski is going to play those first nine games and then he's going to go back to Seattle and uh, just rip and tear it up. So then in that case, it's going to be Isaac Phillips, Seth Jones, Alex Vlasic, Connor Murphy, Jared Tenorti, Nikita Zaitsev, and the extra is going to be Philip Roos. Now, he is in Rockford right now, and he um, he's 24 years old, so he's kind of, it's kind of, a, you know, crap or get off the pot right now for him. So I'd like to bring him up, see what we have, uh, put him in there. You know, is he that much worse than Tenorti? I don't think so. You know, is he that much worse than a Zaitsev? Uh, I don't think so at all. I think Zaitsev is a, kind of a tweener, unfortunately. Um, but you like Tor- Tenorti in there for the toughness factor. So we'll have him in the uh, as an extra practicing with the big club down at Fifth Third Arena. And, um, you know, just getting the reps, seeing what it's like. And then maybe he'll go back to Europe and get his bag and move on. Um, don't really have any any feelings about him you know like I said I like all our players I like you know I like all of them and I want to see them succeed but if that's not how it's going to work it's just not how it's going to work and uh, they're going to move on rip the band-aid off get them out sorry see ya bye have a great life Um, but you know let's it's still Bedard season and with the draft in Nashville on Wednesday you know let's go through some more uh, draft ideas. Let's talk more draft. So I've been hearing through the various podcasts I listen to that um, moving up in the draft, when I'm saying, you know, you have those tiers, you got the top 10, 1 to 10, you know, it's probably even like 1 to 5, one to 5 to 10, 10 to 15, whatever. So getting into that is getting into the top 20, kind of easy, getting into the top 15, a little harder, getting into the top 10, well, it's proven to be almost near impossible. And it's even proving to be impossible to get into that top 15. So, um, you know, I don't really see a lot of uh, those, you know, trades we were talking about, about the draft, you know, working up, you know, moving up to 11 with Vancouver, you know, nope, not going to happen. Moving up to 14 with Pittsburgh, eh, probably not. Um, you know, getting, you know, moving up in, into like the second round or the third round, you know, I think we were, we were talking about Anthony Mantha, um, you know, and we moved up 11 spots from, uh, 52 to 41, I want to say. So, um, you know, it's, I, I just don't think that's really going to work, but, um, luckily our boys at the Blackhawks talk NBC Chicago um, and that's Charlie Romeliotis, Blackhawks insider, James Naveau, and Pat Boyle. Pat Boyle back from vacation. They were talking, they were just throwing some names around, thinking about who are the Blackhawks going to take with number 19 overall. Because obviously number one overall is Connor Bedard. Not getting traded. He's not pulling a Lindros. Nothing of the sorts. Because any trade package that the, a team is going to give up for number one overall is not going to be worth it. I mean, we're literally talking, like, say Toronto is like, yeah, we want Connor Bedard. Okay, well, uh, give us Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, and uh, William Nylander, and then uh, throw in, you know, someone on the back end, uh, maybe a TJ Brody, and um, your next for first four, uh, your next four first round picks, <laughs> uh, all unprotected. So, does that make any sense? No, that doesn't even make sense to me. Um, and, you know, I don't even want any of those Toronto guys, if I'm being honest, because I don't think a lot of them want to win. Um, but that's besides the point. So, uh, for Charlie, he prioritized size because he noticed that, you know, Connor Bedard is in the 5'10 range. You know, and the other forwards, if you're looking at, 
you know, the Blackhawks forwards. And, you know, a lot of those bottom six guys, you know, like like Blackwell, he's a he's a short guy. You know, um, other guys, you know, like an Anderson, I think he's probably 5'10 about. Uh, Reese Johnson, 5'10, you know. So he's prioritizing size. And then he was also saying about like Frank Nazar. Frank Nazar is like, you know, 5'10 about. And um, so he really, really prioritized size. That is Charlie. And so he was looking at a Nate Danielson, a Samuel Hanzik, or a Quentin Musty. And now Quentin Musty does not fit the size bill, but those other guys do. Now the only thing thing is that those Nate Danielsons and Samuel Hanziks might not be available. Uh, plain and simple, they might get taken earlier in the draft. Um, so, you know, I, I'm i okay with that. I think if you look at the last uh, Stanley Cup, you know, the Vegas Golden Knights, their entire six defensemen, they were all Redwoods. They were all six three and above and they would they could dish it they could take it they could play whatever the way you want and i think that's really really important and then you look at florida you know matthew kachuk is a menace to society he tearing it up he is hitting people he is scoring goals he is telling you that your mom is a terrible cook and getting away with it it's just ridiculous so the size factor is pretty big. I think in the uh, in the NHL, um, they they've kind of gone at an overcorrection. So they went the full. They were like, "Hey, well, these guys, these like six foot guys um, that can't even play are, you know, beating people up and playing nine minutes a night. You know, so the goon gone, chuck it. And then you see, okay, uh, possession." speed, skill. And then you got these smaller guys, you know, you got your Alex DeBrinkets, you got your Cole Caulfields. These guys are small and, but they can play. They're so skilled, amazing hands, buttery smooth. And they are just sniping and dangling away. So they went, goon, get them out of here. All the little guys come in. All right, awesome. Speed, skill, Martin St. Louis. You're like, this is awesome. And then they're like, wait a minute, the the big guys that are available, they're taking advantage of these little guys. Now we need to bulk back up. So now those big guys are, are back and they are, but now they can skate and they've got skills. They've got, they've got buttery smooth mitts. They've got good shots. They are big. They can skate. They can move up the ice. Though you want those guys back. And so Nate Danielson, Samuel Hanzik, Quentin Musty for Charlie Romeliotis. James Naveau said the Hawks can go up, which, like I said, it's going to be really, really tough. Uh, they He'd like them to go for Matthew Wood, which I checked that guy out. I believe he's 6'5 already at 18, 19. Uh, no, no qualms, no qualms. Bring him on in. He's got bite. He's got skill. He's got skate. That's awesome. I'm I'm in. Uh, he said uh, Gabe Perot, uh, Oliver Bonk, or Colby Barlow as well. Um, Pat agrees with Charlie in the size department, so he wants Wood, Danielson, Hanzik. He's thinking maybe uh, Callum Ritchie, a Daniel Butt, or a Quentin Musty, and Maybe and then he said, "Well, maybe we can galaxy brain this and get a D instead of a forward." But you know, it's this is a really deep draft for forwards. It's not that deep in the D department, and the it's very top heavy in the D department. So like your David Reinbachers and stuff, they're gonna go kind of early. Or Sandine uh, Pekka, um, you know those guys are going to go um, in like you know they're saying I see a bunch of 
uh, mock drafts, and they've got Rhinebacker going to either Arizona or maybe to uh, uh, Montreal. I, I don't, I don't really get it uh, to be honest, because um, uh, Matve Mitchkov would be available, I think. Um, he shouldn't be, but that's that's also a, a different. They got guys saying Mat, Matve Mitchkov should go two, and then that's just going to throw everything off. So really like top heavy in the D, but not really that deep. So I would just go with a forward. And that's why um, James uh, Niveau was saying Oliver Bonk. <laughs> that's kind of funny. A very funny name to say. Because um, he is a defenseman, just like a good two-way guy, more defensive than offensive. But big right shot, you know, I, I'm okay with that. You know, right shot D are very hard to come by. So, but like I said, I, I just think you should go. There's no reason to Galaxy Brain. I think you just go forward. Um, uh, Corey Prominent of the Athletic, he had at 19 for the Blackhawks either Braden Yeager or Oliver Moore. Um, so I, I'm completely okay with both of those guys. Um, he, he is in Corey Prown and was saying, you know, with Braden Yeager, Braden Yeager is his, um, is his pick over Oliver Moore if they're both still available because Braden Yeager has higher skill. So he's not in that size category, but he's in the skill. And, you know, Hawks have lost Taves, Kane, Debrinkit. You know, they need skill. Yeah, is Counter Bedard going to be here? Of course. Is uh, he need more skill? Uh, absolutely. So you know you're gonna want, you know, Frankie Nazar. He's a good, good player, but he's I want to say a little bit more hard nosed, a little more in your face and smaller. So like he's gonna go get the puck, and then he's gonna go dish it to Bedard, who's gonna finish it. Um, so he's not really gonna be driving play, I don't think. Um, you know, but uh, stranger things have happened. So. And it really depends on what the Black Hawks need. So that's um, that's it for the episode, guys. I'm uh, really excited for Wednesday. Uh, Bedard season is upon us. So they got uh, Black Hawks have a nice party going on in Nashville. If you're gonna make the trek, I've seen a couple Black Hawks fans on Reddit slash Hawks going to uh, Nashville. So. Uh, Good for them. That's awesome. Eat all the Nashville hot chicken you can because, oh, I love that stuff. Um, and then if you're going to the salt shed for the one here at home, you know, let me know how it goes. And, uh, you know, that looks like a great time. They got a bunch of Hawks alumni and stuff. So that's, oh, man, that, that should be really exciting. And uh, salt shed, brand new venue. Um I haven't been there yet, and uh, I'd really like to check it out. So you know what? Maybe I might be going there, and I might get to see you Blackhawks fans. That's going to be a great time. And I just want to, you know, um, last episode I I said some things that weren't quite the truth. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna correct them right here. So Alex DeBrinket, I said 40 and 41 goals. Uh, wrong. Um, it was 41 goals twice. And that was in 18-19 and 21-22. So uh, love Alex and um, all the best to him getting out of Ottawa. Uh, I heard some trade uh, speculation, some trade things. You know, maybe he wants to go to, um, maybe get him to Vegas for, uh, I think it was a third round pick in Nicholas Waugh. Or Nicholas Roy, you know, I don't know which one it is, if I'm being honest here. I think it's Waugh. So, uh, like Patrick Waugh, the goaltender, legendary. Um, you know, so we'll see how that that goes out. You know, uh, Ottawa's definitely taking him to ARB. So, uh, I would never wish ARB on uh, arbitration on my worst enemies. I've heard they are the teams just pick you apart piece by piece. No thanks. I'm uh, <laughs> I'm good on that. And then I said uh, Anthony Mantha, big body, like 6'2", 6'3". Uh, no, he's 6'5". So um, he is a big boy. And um, hopefully he can use that size uh, if the Hawks end up getting him and make space out there for our boy Connor Bedard. 
Um, Zaitsev, I mentioned uh, the trade in which he got acquired. It was just a cap dump from Ottawa. Uh, I think I said a second and a fifth. Uh, so it's a 23, a 2023 second. So this year is a second that we're getting. And then a 2026 fourth is also what we got in that. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, get this, uh, you know, iron these things out. You know, I'm sure there's some diehards out there like, dude, are you kidding me? It wasn't 40 goals. It was 41 twice. Get it together. I understand. And I apologize. Uh, and then I didn't say uh, the first names of the prospects that I thought that the Hawks should go after. So I just said Musty and more. And if you've been you know, following along with the draft, you already knew this, but you know, this is just for me. And um, Quentin Musty, Oliver Moore. So, you know, good luck to the Blackhawks on Wednesday. Bedard season. Can't wait to see him in a Blackhawks jersey. That's going to be so sick. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm looking forward to see who the Hawks get at uh, 19. And maybe, maybe they can slide in with a couple of their second round picks into that first round and then maybe grab like a crystal you know grab Connor bedard's buddy small skilled you know it's you know it doesn't go with the size but that's okay they're buddies they're going to be having a great time doing dirty dangles and sniping top cheese so this was blackhawk central hockey podcast i'm joe vitale I'm going to get out of here. Let's go, Hawks. Bedard season. Have a great night. We'll see you on the next one.